Um, so this is this is sort of the way that we implement this on our system currently. It's pretty similar to the way that um, you would do a single. Okay, so so if you recall, you know I'm going to use my laser pointer here. All that was required to use a bias photodiode was just to essentially reuse the polarizing beam splitter and a 50-50 beam splitter and then focus your return signal, which will be coming from your microscope objective, through a lens with focal length f. And then when, if you just had a biased photodiode, what you would do is you would take your photodiode and place it a distance of one focal length away and then it would get focused onto your um, detector. So that actually, so that's actually still works to get it to your balanced photodiode. So that'll get your signal, your reflected probe signal, um, to a photodiode. You basically just make sure that the path length between your lens and the actual sensing portion of the balanced photodiode is one focal length away, and that'll work just fine. Um, but then the thing that you need to do is basically make sure that the probe beam before it ever went to the sample also makes it to the photodiode with the same amount of laser power. So the way that we do that is that we use the fact that um, you know that we had a we had a polarizing beam splitter that was wasting 50% of the light initially. Initially we had a beam block here that was just collecting that wasted light. Um, so what we do if we're using a balanced amplified photo detector is we just replace that beam block with a mirror. So the mirror will essentially steer the light towards a balanced photo, photodiode. Um, and then basically what we need to do is make sure that there is a lens that focuses that laser beam down onto the balanced photodiode such that it has the exact same spot size as the other one or something close to it. So we choose the same focal length um, lens and we place it one focal length away um, from the actual sensing unit. To make sure, now it's important that, that, you know, for these balanced photodiodes to work, it's also important to make sure that the laser intensity of these two things is the same. Um, so the way we do that, the way we mechanically do that, is using a neutral density filter. So you can buy neutral density filters that have like a variable amount of uh, attenuation. So ours is basically one that's on that's on a mounted spinning wheel, and you can just turn it until it turns out until the difference in the DC voltages is zero. Um, at, on the on the version of the balanced photodiode that I had shown you before, the Thor Labs for what was it the 445 PDB 450A. Um, in that version, there's a couple of different ways that you can make sure that the reflected probe and the pre-sample probe have the same DC intensity. Um, one way is that these things provide what's called a fast monitor output. So um, I guess you can't see it in this image, but there's um, some BNC. Um, connections that come off of the balanced photodiode that will separately tell you how much laser or how much laser intensity is in, on one side versus the other side. It'll essentially only give you the DC one because they have a slow response time. The, um, the other way to do it is to actually use the signal itself. Um, and so, uh, you know, basically the signal that comes out of this balanced photodiode, because it'll be amplified, you'll have some DC back, if, if you're not subtracting out the two DC intensities um, fully, then the output of the balanced photodiode will have a DC intensity, um, which you can detect using, um, you know, like a DAC board or some kind of multimeter um, setup. We, we tend to do this using a software built into a, a DAC system, but you can do it either way, and I've seen it done using the fast monitor outputs. Um, for example, the University of Virginia system um, run by Pat Hopkins does it that way.